ready for the tip of our Sonic blockbuster matchup. Underway in Chapel Hill, Duke winning the opening tip. Cormac Ryan starting out on Tyrese Proctor. Put a little size on Proctor. Proctor sounds like he's all the way back from that ankle injury that cost him some time. They were without Roach for a while, Mitchell for a while. What a matchup this figures to be. Filipowski and Baycott. And Filipowski strikes early as we show you the degree starting lineup for North Carolina. Cadeau, the freshman, and then look at all the experience of the rest of the lineup with Davis Ryan. Harrison Ingram having a great year. And, of course, Armando Baycott, who lays it in. Well executed by North Carolina. They set a little double low cross screen with two guards. And Armando Baycott able to slip underneath it and was wide open. And you can tell right away, Duke is going to put Armando Baycott in as many ball screens as they can. Proctor, no. Carolina in transition. R.J. Davis. What a pass ahead by North Carolina's transition game. And that was not an easy shot by R.J. Davis. He just makes it look easy. He can beat you from beyond the arc. He can beat you at the free throw line. And he can beat you in the mid-range game as well. Filipowski right into the chest of Baycott, who wins the battle. Cormac Ryan, the grad transfer from Notre Dame. He's played at a bunch of games against Duke in his time with the Irish. Here's the freshman, Cadeau, playing some really good basketball the last couple of weeks. Armando Baycott over his last three games only averaging a little bit under seven points a game over that stretch. They can't forget about him. Harrison Ingram misses the three. Yeah, Hubert Davis and Armando Baycott had a chat in his office, in Davis's office, and Baycott was saying, you know, RJ's having such a great year. RJ this and RJ that, and Hubert said, wait a minute. I want 20 from him. I want 20 from you as well. Well, they want to play inside out. And after the rebound by Harrison Ingram, who's leading the ACC in ACC games in rebounding at just under 12 a game, that's a spectacular pass ahead. And what a difficult little mid-range shot along the baseline in the short corner by R.J. Davis. But he is so good at those mid-range shots. Roach off the screen, knocks it down to tie the game. Badeau trailing off that little pin-down screen. And I think that Jeremy Roach is one of the best mid-range shooters, not only in the ACC, but in the country. Came off. Hey. Whoa! And Roach goes flying. Checking out his left elbow and grimacing a little bit as he went high in the air and came down hard. When you're hyped up, that's when you need to be your most disciplined on defense. Just a simple little shot fake on the ball reversal, and Jeremy Roach went flying right at Cormac Ryan. I think that's a foul. <laughs> Roach coming back. He missed some time recently with an E problem. Came off the bench the last couple of games, but back in the starting lineup tonight. So Caleb Foster will come off the bench for Duke. Ryan, good deep position by Baycott. Mitchell comes over to double team, and Baycott kicks it back out. Well, good job by Jeremy Roach to make that catch difficult on the ball side. Tip by Filipowski. Still Carolina ball with five to shoot. It's really important for Kyle Filipowski guarding Armando Baycott. One, not to foul, but to stay between him and the basket. When Baycott gets an angle, he's going to score, get fouled, or both. Ryan to inbound. Gets it into Davis. He lays it in. R.J. Davis just never stops moving, and he never changes expression. When it's going well, when it's not... One of the hardest workers you will ever see. 36 last week against Wake. 28 Tuesday in the loss to Georgia Tech. Ingram wins the battle with Mitchell. Carolina running again. That is Carolina basketball. Armando Baycott beating the opposing big guys down the floor. Oh, and then an Aaron pass. And Ingram lays it in. Carolina by six. John Shire doesn't look like he's calling a timeout. He's just saying to his guys, settle down. You want to play 100 miles an hour on defense, but you have to downshift on offense.
Proctor little stop and go and lays it in to quiet the crowd. Well, since he came back from injury, Tyrese Proctor is playing his best basketball. Almost 17 points a game over his last five. Air ball Cormac Ryan, who has not shot the ball as well as he's capable of this year. Just 30% from three. How about a strong drive and finish there from the freshman Jared McCain, who is playing great recently, averaging over 15 a game his last 12. Great pass, Cadeau, wide open, Ryan, and this time he'll bury it. Cormac Ryan was a lead dog for Mike Bray at Notre Dame. He had 28 points against Duke in a game. He is a mature player, started his career at Stanford, unafraid of the moment. Two-man game, Proctor and Filipowski. He can pop and shoot, he can spin, but he doesn't finish here as he tried to take Baycott off the dribble. Inside the Baycott, he's got to run it down just to save it, and they turn it over. Just a tough angle to get that high-low pass, throwing it to Baycott, going away from the bucket. Ingram comes over for the rejection. Ingram wide open and misses the three. Boy, again, Carolina J pushing at every opportunity. And they're doing it with their defense. That's what's starting the break, grabbing a rebound. And then outletting it quickly, but Harrison Ingram can rip and run. He can grab that rebound and bring it up himself. That makes Carolina even faster. The transfer from Stanford. Hubert Davis just loves him. Filipowski, short on the three. And that only gets him riled up even more here inside the Smith Center. Baycott, jump hook, no! Well, Hubert Davis wants Armando Baycott when he gets the ball in the low post he, in practice he says go to work He wants him to go to work And score inside and be a threat every time down There's five five and nine points for Baycott his last three games To go ahead to Davis Davis with the extra gear tipped by Ryan And Baycott is fouled Carolina's defense has been stellar to start this game. They've stayed between Duke and the back. Both great players. Hubert Davis, one of the best shooters in ACC history, and John Shire, I think the most underrated superstar in Duke basketball history. Probably should have had his number retired. He scored over 2,000 points, won a national championship in 2010. Just a great, great player. John Shire uh, today at Shooter Ad this morning talked about distractions. Just eliminate distractions, focus on the game. Hubert Davis at practice yesterday talked about shutting out the noise, just focus on the game. Different words, but the same message. And in this day and age, social media, phones, and so on, it's hard to do, but both coaches trying to make sure their players just focus on what they have to do on the court. Well, you're not going to shut out the noise in this building. Oh. It's going to be loud for 40 minutes or more. Ryan Young into the game. Kyle Filipowski has gone to the bench. Caleb Foster with the ball has checked in for Duke as well. What a recovery by R.J. Davis. He was behind Caleb Foster off that screening action, got back in front and knocked the ball away. Like Carolina's defense the last 11 games has been stellar. Seth Trimble has checked in, kicks it to Harrison Ingram, who's off to a great start tonight. Jalen Withers, the grad transfer from Louisville, is on the floor for the Heels as well. He loves back downs in there, but got two defenders. Trimble a little bit strong, and Foster soars for the rebound. Duke can give extra pressure by digging down because they're not worried about Trimble knocking down a three. He is not a, a great shooter from the perimeter. Roach around the screen from Young, steps back, leaves it short. Mitchell with a putback. That's the difficulty. If you're not going to guard Mark Mitchell out on the perimeter, he gets a run up to the glass. You have to go find him and put your body on him. He can't wait for him to get to you. Playing some really good basketball lately, averaging almost 15 a game his last six, 20 or more in three of those six games. The pull up, McCain. Had a pretty good look in transition. And McCain's their best three-point shooter, and he's at his best shooting that ball in transition. Baycott spins. The double comes. He kicks. Ingram. Yes! What a great look opposite by Armando Baycott when he got the double team. Duke's keeping it from going out ball side, but he just looked opposite and found Harrison Ingram. 
Roach into the paint and a soft touch. Looking for a foul as well as he knocks it down. Well, that wide pin down, you have to lock and trail on his outside hip. But what you're doing is running him off the three-point line. So that's a tough two. Pretty good matchup here, isn't it? Davis and Roach, two guys who have been at this for a while in this rivalry. And Ingram, boy, great save by Withers as Ingram almost air airmailed it. Shot clock at seven. Thought Ingram was going to back down Caleb Foster into the low post. Baycott forced to put it up and knocks down a long two. Six in the early going for Armando Baycott. Harrison Ingram guarding Jared McCain. A little floppy action to try to free up Jeremy Roach against Seth Trimble. Foster into the paint. Left hand and a strong finish. He rejected the screen. They were trying to ice it to the side, force him to his left, and he took it. And how about the heels in Trimble getting down the court quickly again? The Carolina's transition game has been on point. That's after a made bucket. They're beating Duke down the floor. And if Caleb Foster was on his back after making that bucket, but still... And whenever anybody plays Carolina, it's always discussed, hey, you got to get back in transition and slow them down. Young with a bucket, and John Shire is waving his guys back with as much energy as he can, telling them to get back down on D. With that high ball screen action, if you don't have a weak side defender coming over to tag Ryan Young on that roll to the basket, Duke's going to cut him up in the half court right in the middle of the floor. Got some mismatches right now. Mitchell's on Trimble. Foster's on Ingram. Ingram spin. Shot clocks at two. And here comes McCain. Roach from the wing. Count it. A three to bring him back within a point. Boy, and that was with Harrison Ingram flying right by. What a great shot by Jeremy Roach. Duke doesn't get up and down the floor the way that Carolina does. They play at a relatively slow tempo, but they were really strong in transition there. Baycock, the spin, and the reverse. That's the problem when you give Armando Baycott that angle. Duke decided not to send another defender to double-team Baycott, and he got the angle to get to the rim on Ryan Young. And Kyle Filipowski's been sitting at the scores table for several minutes waiting to check in, along with Tyrese Proctor, but there hasn't been a whistle. Well, that quick outlet. Carolina's racing up the floor. Davis. Looked like there might have been a little contact in transition. They play on, and back come the Blue Devils. A little bit of contact in this game is not going to cut it. There have been a total of two fouls called in this game, both on Duke. Two fouls called, maybe more committed. Withers knocks it away, shot clock at 10. McCain, again, seeking out the paint, seeking out the traffic. That time had it knocked away. What a defensive job by Jalen Withers. Oh, and Baycott threw it behind Withers. It bounced to Davis. And Trimble misses the three. There's some tired legs, I think, already right now. They've, they've played about five, six minutes without a whistle. And continue to. Roach pulls up for three. And ties the game. Armando Baycott basically playing in drop coverage, which means he's not up with the screener. And Jeremy Roach just able to pick off his defender and get that shot easily. Davis short on the floater. McCain a strong rebound. Duke looking for the lead. Young lost it. Withers ahead to Trimble. Spins and hits. Another spectacular pass ahead by North Carolina. And Trimble, who's a fantastic athlete and a great defender. A little Kenny Smith in that spin there. The Jet used to do that all the time back in the 80s. Foster with a clean look. And Trimble skies for the rebound. Baycott, left hand, too strong. And Duke ball. Baycott doesn't miss many of those. Foster, no. And a foul on Baycott.
North Carolina's transition early in this. Other players stand around watching Connect work. They got to get involved, especially if they want to beat Kentucky and Rupp. Armando Baycott is on the bench. He was called for a foul before uh, that last stoppage, and he was talking to a member of the the medical or training staff for the heels throughout the timeout. Jalen Washington, who has played very well recently in limited minutes. He is in now, and he is defending Kyle Filipowski. He played very well in his limited minutes against Georgia Tech. Had a big-time dunk in traffic in that game, but I think Filipowski's got to go right at him. And it looks like he's thinking about it, and but he never got the shot off, was not aware of the shot clock. Timeout on the floor, 7.13 to go. Heels by two. Once again, he's played in these games. Obviously, he coached in a couple last year and won them both. He's working up a lather over on the bench, Jay. But right now, this four-minute segment, at least the start of it, North Carolina's got a number of substitutes in. Hubert Davis wants to keep his starters fresh. He plays a lot of guys. Trimble, strong baseline drive. Yeah, no Baycott still and no R.J. Davis on the floor right now for Carolina. But you have to play Seth Trimble for the drive. He's not going to pull the trigger on that shot. And stepping in and committing the foul is Jalen Withers. Jalen Withers transferred into North Carolina from Louisville, where he's one of Louisville's top scorers. He's an outstanding athlete and hit 43s for the Cardinals last year. But he provides a different dimension with his athleticism and his ability to switch. But he's guarding Kyle Filipowski now. And Filipowski's got some size on him. You think Filipowski's going to roll him down into the post. Filipowski, two points, two rebounds. But again, he's only played six minutes because of that incredibly long stretch where he and others were waiting to check in. But there weren't any whistles. Proctor among them. He's back in there now. Trimble on him. From the elbow. And the long rebound kicks out to Roach. Foster stumbling out of control and still gets it to go. Out of control and then got himself in control to make that shot. Crowd wanted to travel. Looked like he got rid of it in time, don't you think? What a recovery, though, to make that shot. To go. And he'll go to the free throw line. Foster called for the foul. There have been precious few free throws in this ball game to this point. And that's where North Carolina makes their living. They shoot over 22 free throws a game. But what a recovery to beat the shot clock by Caleb Foster. So Elliot Cadeau, the freshman from West Orange, New Jersey, is at the line. He's been playing really well lately. Last four games, averaging about 11 points, five assists per game, had 16 and six against Florida State last week. But over his last two games, Elliot Cadeau just six of 19 from the field, but he is nine of 10 from the foul line over those two games and knocks down his first one. And anytime you play North Carolina because they attack inside, and attack the paint. They want to get to the foul line. They can be devastating from the free throw line. A good free throw shooting team, especially R.J. Davis. Four point lead, Carolina. Roach was looking for a foul call on Trimble, didn't get it. A good ball pressure here by Cadeau. They want to send him to his weak hand. Ryan with a steal. For three. This is a different level of defense from North Carolina than we saw earlier in the season. It looked like Cormac Ryan when he shot the gap here to get that wounded duck of a pass that was deflected. Looked like he was taking that into dunk, but got hit and still completed the play. And there's the emotion you see in a Duke, North Carolina game. Jay, that was Duke's fifth turnover. Carolina's only coughed it up once. And Carolina has turned those five Duke turnovers into eight points. That's really one of the statistical differences in the game so far. And why we said that the lead story with North Carolina is not their offense. This year, it is their defense. Top five of the nation in defensive efficiency per Ken Palm. As Washington is called for the foul. Baycott coming back into the game as we speak for Carolina. 
after sitting for a few minutes. And with the way North Carolina substitutes and always had, always has, it keeps the starters fresh. Lots of banging between these two. And a fadeaway by Filipowski will go. Now Filipowski down in the low post. He likes to spin off. But not many big guys are making fadeaway jumpers like that. Rideau picks up his dribble, now gets it back from Ingram. He'll pull up for a long jumper, and the rebound down to McCain. Roach is wide open, and Carolina catches a break there. They just lack of communication in transition. Godot into the chest of Roach, and a block is called. And that's what Carolina needs to do more of, especially in transition. Attack the paint. Now, Filipowski one-on-one -on -one in the post, just a little back down. And that's a, a big-time shot fading away over one of the better shot blockers in the ACC in Armando Baca. So, Godot back to the free-throw line. The foul on Jeremy Roach was his second. Caleb Foster is at the scorer's table. We'll find out after this free throw who's coming out. And it is indeed Roach, so he may sit for the final 440 of the half. You know, Dan, that last possession, that was good defense by Armando Bacot. He forced Kyle Filipowski into a fadeaway tough two, yeah. and Filipowski made it. Yep. You know, sometimes you just have to take your hat off to, to good offense, but he forced him into a tough two. One of two for Cadeau, and Carolina leads by five. Carolina forcing Duke up at the top to move to their left, force him to their weak hand. Boy, somehow McCain just kept on going and found a lane. Jared McCain is just a winner. I mean, he is having a terrific year. Over his last 12 games, he's averaging just under 16 points a game, shooting 50% from the field and over 40% from three. ACC Rookie of the Week last week. Duke playing more containment on the perimeter. Ingram knocks down the three, and it was the burst of speed of Cadeau that moved the defense and opened up some space for Ingram. Well, that's what he does. Cadeau is a penetrating point guard. And now a turnover. Cadeau has it. And we'll go to the free throw line again. They did, can't There's even no hear the whistle. Did they call a foul? Yeah, they did. The players kept going because nobody can hear the whistle. I couldn't hear it either. <laughs> Just play one play at a time, but we must take care of the ball. Jay, how do you feel about that? I would agree with that. I think also Kyle Filipowski has a chance when Armando Bacot's in the game, pick and roll when he's not in the game, put him down low on the block, let him actually be aggressive offensively. They need points in the paint from Filipowski. Thank you so much, guys. Got it. Jess, thank you. Cadeau is at the line, about to take Carolina's ninth free throw. Their ninth free throw attempt of the game. He makes them both. They're only five of nine, but the point is they've been there nine times. Duke has not been to the free throw line yet in this game. Well, Carolina only one turnover. Duke has six. Largest lead of the game for the Heels. The Lepowski misses the three. Baycott the uncontested rebound. And it has been one shot and out for Duke. R.J. Davis, who got up to a very quick start. He's got Caleb Foster, the freshman, on him. He had two early baskets, but still at four points now. As Cadeau really has been the most assertive guy offensively for the Heels in recent minutes. Really good pace. Off that side ball screen to get into the lane. He didn't blast off that screen, just read the defense. McCain cuts beautifully and lays it in. Well, he cut off that screen. Instead of going over the screen, he went under it, read the defense very effectively on that cut. And Duke doing a better job getting back in transition on this trip. Got a switch. Now Caleb yeah. Foster's on Baycott. Baycott wants the ball. Now he has it. Here comes the help. Mitchell came over, bothered the shot. Ryan for three. Boy, what a job by Mitchell, but Baycott kicked it out, and they got an open three as a result of it. This is a good passing North Carolina team. 
McCain, a step wow. back three. How about that shot? Used his off arm. And one of the officials telling Jared McCain, keep quiet. He had a little talking to do to Cormac Ryan after nailing that three. McCain's got nine points and seven rebounds already in this game for the Blue Devils. Well, he's an outstanding guard rebounder. And Jared McCain had ten rebounds against Virginia Tech to go with his nine points in that win that Duke had in Blacksburg. Jeremy Roach is back in with two minutes to go in the half playing with two fouls. Tyrese Proctor, who's been quiet so far in this one, back to the bench. A two-man game with Baycott. Now they send a double. Godot's wide open. He'll take it. Tipped out by Ryan and a fresh possession for the Heels. What a pass by Godot. And Ingram with a three. Double figures for Ingram. He's got 11. What a pass by Elliot Cadeau. And give credit to Cormac Ryan for keeping that ball alive so his teammate Cadeau could get it. Third assist of the game for the freshman Cadeau. Foster and the follow by Filipowski. It's almost like Foster just threw that up, knowing that when Baycott came over, Filipowski was going to have the glass wide open. Baycott over Filipowski, banks it in. And he's into double figures. Now you can't ask anything more from Filipowski. He made Baycott take a tough shot in the middle of the lane. Roach into the paint. Cradles it, misses it, and Baycott another rebound. Excellent job by R.J. Davis defensively to stay in front and force the really difficult shot in the lane. Low cross screen. They did not switch. And then a screen for the screener action. Baycott. Nice pass. Cadeau sees some space. Baycott the follow. Boy, all set up by a good pass out of the double team by Armando Baycott. North Carolina has made great decisions on the offensive end. Elliot dignitaries in the house tonight. What a great player Mitch Kupchak was. Played on the 1976 Olympic team that won gold in Montreal. Coached by Dean Smith. Dean Smith, correct. Well, I don't need to say correct. You do. <laughs> I say correct. Yeah, sir. <laughs> you don't tell me I'm correct, Dan. I tell you I'm correct. <laughs> Final seconds of the half. Got to switch. And Baycott got a piece of it. What great defense by Armando Baycott. Did not bite on the shot fake by Tyrese Proctor after he got switched off on him. Carolina's defense was spectacular. So good. They could shoot the ball. They could score around the basket. But I did like we did a good job without fouling. We didn't put him on the free throw line once in the first half. Thank you so much, Coach. A lot to be happy about if you're Hubert Davis as we are ready for the second half of our Sonic Blockbuster matchup. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Jess Sims, Carolina, and Duke, and the Heels leading by 10. Tyrese Proctor starting out on R.J. Davis. Mitchell switched off on him. The double comes to Baycott. Open is Cadeau. Shot fake, step in. Baycott the rebound and the putback. Well, you just can't leave the floor on a shot fake from Elliott Cadeau. You close out short and take away the drive, but Cadeau gets into the lane and opens everything up for the offensive glass for Armando Baycott because you have to come over and stop that drive. McCain open and misses the three. Ingram has it. But Ingram is just a monster on the glass. The best rebounder in the conference in ACC games and playing with the best rebounder in North Carolina history in Armando Baycott. Yes, Hubert Davis, what do you like about Harrison Ingram? And Hubert bursts into a huge smile and says, everything. And then you ask him for more. He talks about his smile, his impact on the culture of this team, and then he talks about the rebounding as well. And why wouldn't he? Cadeau wide open. They dared him to take it, and it rims out. Proctor did a great job on R.J. Davis, just staying with him, not helping off. That's size on R.J. Davis because he's 6'5 and long arm. Filipowski and a foul. 
Elliot Cadeau catches the ball on the left wing, and because he's trying to double the post, Jared McCain's got to recover out. He recovered not taking away middle and then left the floor on a simple shot fake by Cadeau. He's got to close out short, take away the drive. You can put late pressure on that shot if he decides to take it. He's a reluctant three-point shooter. And the first free throw attempt of the game for the Blue Devils goes down for Kyle Filipowski. I don't think Duke can put Kyle Filipowski in enough ball screens. Pull Armando Baycott away from the basket if he stays too long on the ball. You've got Filipowski in a pick and pop situation, a short roll, or getting all the way to the rim. But John Shire said early he likes him to roll to establish that part of his game. But he said after that, let him pop as much as he wants. He's shooting the three better than he did last year. 28% last year, 37% this year. Davis bouncing off a couple of defenders. Just four in the half for the ACC's leading scorer as he is fouled on the drive. So difficult to stay in front of R.J. Davis. He's got a great handle. I mean, North Carolina and Duke does the same thing, but they play two point guards. Cadeau's a point guard, but R.J. Davis is a point guard as well. He's just a point guard that's an unbelievable scorer. J3 on Proctor. John Shire's going to leave him, but that's a... That's a decision that has to be made. A tough one that you have to make at this point of the game. You want to leave one of your best players in there if you can. Mismatch in the post. Cadeau wide open again. A good job by Jared McCain to guard Baycott on that switch and come away with the rebound. Whoa! What a shot to bring Duke a little bit closer. Majoring in English. <laughs> McCain into double figures. Ingram with the answer at the other end with a three. North Carolina has three three-point shooters. Davis, Ryan, and Ingram. Nobody found Ingram in transition. Ingram now with 14 and 8 already in this game. And he's got four threes in this game. Hit all three of Carolina's threes in the first half. And then knocks one down in transition in the second. The little ball fake. I mean, you don't get that much time to shoot in a game of horse. Transfer from Stanford the last couple of years made exactly 36 threes in each season With the four he's made tonight. He's got 40 already this year Roach he knew he missed it charges after it against the rebound Oh, that's a foul wow Duke will take the dunk by Filipowski that yeah, Carolina would have been better off if they called that foul those are two big, strong, aggressive guys. Baycott and Filipowski banging all night. Got a switch on the dribble handoff. Now it's Mitchell on Davis. Going to get a ball screen. Davis, and what a recovery and block by Mitchell. Well, there's many guys in America, Jay, at his size can do that on a player of the caliber of Davis. Ingram with a steal. They're running again. And then Baycott gives it right back. Just a bad decision to give it to Baycott at that point in the floor. And Mitchell is headed to the free throw line. Well, that's quite a turnaround. A great steal by North Carolina on a poor post pass on Duke's end. And then they pitch it away by giving it, to, you know, like, this is a foul. There's no question about it. I mean, are you kidding me? Is that legal guarding position and incidental contact? Come on. But fortunate for Duke, they didn't call that. Mitchell at the line. Again, a guy who has taken his offense to another level recently, averaging almost 15 a game over his last six games. He missed a couple of games with a knee injury. One of the Duke losses, the home loss to Pitt, which is their only loss in the last 11 games, I believe it is. They were without Mark Mitchell and without Jeremy Roach. John Shire is encouraged by the fact that they've had the season they've had and Jay they're about the healthiest they've been right now with Proctor Mitchell and Roach all pretty much close to 100 percent well, Mitchell shooting about 60 percent in ACC games Ryan into Baycott and a foul on Filipowski Baycott doing a great job of establishing position with two feet in the paint and when he gets it that deep as a big guy What you really want to do is post so deep. You don't have to make a post move You, know, you catch it on the block or off the block. You got to make a post move you catch it that deep You just go straight up with it
Number two on Filipowski. Baycott shooting an impressive 79% from the line this year, by far the best of his career. Tomorrow, a women's basketball triple header on ESPN2. And the app, it begins with Virginia Tech taking on North Carolina. Then number one, South Carolina hosting Ole Miss. And finally, UCLA and fourth-ranked Stanford. Stanford took a loss to USC last night. Juju Watkins with 51 for USC. Great women's triple header tomorrow. Juju Watkins is the next truly great women's basketball superstar. The lead is 10. Roach from the elbow. Boy, what a tough shot over Armando Baycott in drop coverage. Seth Trimble got picked off trying to go over the top of that high ball screen. Roach with a dozen to lead the Blue Devils. Ingram quick release and he knocks down another one. Well, yeah. His fifth three of the game. You think he's feeling it? And how about R.J. Davis when he got the switch, trusting Harrison Ingram and giving him the ball? McCain floats it up, and it somehow goes. Soft touch with a left hand for the freshman. Jared McCain averages over 12 points per game and shoots over 40% from three, but he has done a great job getting into the paint. He just makes winning plays. Another touch for Baycott. Left hand, and yes! Well, Duke looks like it's coming with the double team when Baycott puts it on the deck. And when he did, he just turned to the baseline side away from the double team. This is the Baycott Carolina knows, and this is the Baycott Carolina's been looking for in recent games, and they are certainly getting it here tonight. Duke, Duke has been switching. With better and determined, nothing untoward. As the great Louis Carnesecca, the coach at St. John's, used to say, it was a subway push. <laughs> Carolina by 11 here in the second half, despite the leading score with the ACC. RJ Davis only four, two for seven tonight. Baycott and Ingram have combined for 35. Oh, what a great job by Seth Trimble to stay in front of Caleb Foster on that drive. McCain, and he knocks down another one. He's done an outstanding job putting the ball on the deck tonight. Well, D Duke is getting into the lane, and they're finishing some plays in this second half. Now Duke in a little zone. Corner three won't go for Jalen Withers, who then slipped. But appears to be okay. So... Treetop question. We've talked about Carolina being so much better defensively this year than they have been in recent years. Why is that the case in your opinion? Well, after they gave up 87 points in each of their games against UConn and Kentucky and did it back-to-back -back in two losses, I think they realized that they're not going to outscore people with this team. They're going to have to get stops. And they are getting stops. Yet another one. Trimble with a beautiful look ahead to Davis. Boy, points off turnovers have been all Carolina. It is now 12 to 2 in points off turnovers. Easy baskets by doing something really difficult really well. Filipowski open for a three. Tremble, what a rebound. And when he grabs the rebound, he can bring it up on his own. Withers will head to the free throw line. Carolina's transition attack, whether after a make or a miss, has been relentless. That looks like it should count as a turnover for Duke. And it turns into an easy basket on the other end for R.J. Davis, who hasn't seen many openings in this game. Duke has dedicated a defender to him that is not helping off. Most of the time it's been Tyrese Proctor. Mark Mitchell switched off on him on dribble handoffs. The occasional screen he's coming off. So here's Withers, the grad transfer from Louisville. Averaging about four and a half points, three and a half rebounds per game. Only playing about nine minutes, but this is a guy who started 64 games with the Cardinals. This is a very experienced and a talented player. But he adds a different dimension when he plays like the athlete he is. You know, he's a good rebounder. He's got length. He's good at the rim. And I think I mentioned he had 43s last year for Louisville.
You saw Filipowski and Baycott both go to the bench. Withers will sit after the free throws. Ryan back in. And with the way North Carolina substitutes Dan, they can stay fresh for all 40 minutes. A lot of new faces on this team. It is a deeper team, or at least one where Hubert Davis appears more comfortable using more bodies this year. Another turnover. Carolina is swarming to the ball. On that short roll, Ryan Young caught it. And he had three Carolina bodies surrounding him with nowhere to go. Ninth Duke turnover, and just as impressively as you see, the heels have turned it over only twice. Ingram, the rebound. And the jumper. And it's a 15-point lead for Carolina. Harrison Ingram is on fire. What a game he's having. His mom looking on with the light here in Chapel Hill. Again, doing everything that Hubert Davis could ever ask of a player to help his team win. Harrison Ingram is doing it tonight, and he's doing it in front of family. With more, here's Jess Sims. Yes, Dan, he's doing it in front of his mom and his sister. And his sister, Lauren, is actually a freshman at Duke, and he went to support her in quite a few of her volleyball games over there. And he said he learned a very hard lesson early. He walked in with a Carolina shirt. So tonight, he said, um, I have to go back into my car and change, so tonight you need to wear my jersey. Yeah, that's tough when one student, when you got siblings, and one is a student athlete for Duke, and one is a student athlete for Carolina, but you got to support family. Wait, Dan, how about the combination of Armando Baycott and Harrison Ingram? 37 points, 18 rebounds, 15 of 21 from the field. They have been dominant in a game where R.J. Davis is just three of nine with six points. So here's what John Shire is looking to do coming out of the timeout. A little pressure to try to shake things up. One, two, two, three-quarter court press. Not necessarily to force a turnover, but take time off the clock and force Carolina to play in the half court. Davis around Filipowski. Washington with a rebound and puts it back up and in. If Filipowski has to help out and guard R.J. Davis, that's going to open up the offensive glass, and Washington took advantage of it. Washington is a very talented young player, but again, playing behind Baycott just doesn't get very many minutes, but he is a, he's a real nice piece on this team for Hubert Davis. Just got a whistle for the foul, his second. That middle ball screen action in the slot is awfully difficult to guard because weak side help has to come from a long way and you got to leave a three-point shooter in order to help. Proctor to inbounds for Duke. 12.25 to go. 14-point lead heels into Filipowski. Filipowski again. And somehow gets that to go and kind of waves his hands up in the air looking for a foul call that he didn't get. He absorbed a bump, but he's having to take a lot of tough twos. He's got 11 points in this game, but two of them have been fallaways. Really difficult shots over Armando Baycott. Ingram into Baycott. Roach cheating over. There's the double. The open man, Trimble, bothered from behind by Proctor. Needed to shoot it right away. He allowed Proctor to push him right underneath the rim. Nice pass. Roach finds Mitchell for the slam. And a little spark here for the visitors. A side ball screen. A little two-man game now with Baycott and Davis. McCain over for the double. Ten to shoot. Ingram with space. Knocks down another one. This one a two-pointer. He's got 21. Spectacular. Harrison Ingram has been absolutely spectacular. McCain. And Ingram down with a rebound. That is his tenth. 21 and 10 already for Harrison Ingram. Good job by Cormac Ryan to give that little pass fake. That could have been picked off if he just tried to reverse it. Not this time for Ingram. The signal from Roger Ayers is that Ingram kicked out his legs. That he wasn't fouled, and Roach lays it in at the other end. 
Well, with Ingram on his back, Duke had numbers, and Jeremy Roach took advantage of it. But 10 down with 10 minutes to go. This is about getting stops on the road. Davis with six. Carolina leads by 10. Tremble. Boy, he just knocked McCain right out of bounds and then finished it. That's eight points for Trimble. Could have been 10 if he'd finished that earlier one when he got pushed under the basket. But his defense has been excellent as well. Proctor with a step back. Duke needs him. McCain the offensive rebound. Well, McCain's got double-figure rebounds as well, doesn't he? Filipowski, strong finish right into the chest of Baycott. Well, you take away one shoulder and he spins right to the other. Just a great drop step against pretty good defense by Armando Baycott. He had to finish over him. And to answer your question, yes, it's a double-double for Jared McCain, 15 and 10. I've got to switch. Mitchell is on Davis and Proctor had to switch off on Ingram. And a foul before the shot on Kyle Filipowski. And Baycott has been a man rolling down into the low post. Middle of the lane. I like how aggressive that he's been in the post in this game. He's calling for the ball, and he's a target in there. And that can loosen things up for the perimeter and his teammates. But right now, Dan, Carolina's got 16 fouls. And Duke has to continue to drive the ball, but they they have a Carolina has not allowed a three from Duke in this second half Carolina's playing extremely well at both ends of the floor tonight Trimble looking inside he'll have to put it up from the baseline And the loose ball rebound down to mark Mitchell as Duke tries to get it into single digits and Carolina only two turnovers in this game thus far good fake the Lepowski lost it, and it's Carolina ball. And that's turnover number 10 for the Blue Devils. They have been a low turnover team. They average just under 10 on the season, but it's the margin that is remarkable. And you can see that eight turnover margin and the points off turnovers, 14 to 2. Yeah. Because eight of the ten turnovers have been live ball turnovers. That was one of the two that wasn't. Live ball turnovers often wind up in layups at the other end. Can't defend a run out. Davis. Boy, he draws a crowd, doesn't he? And he came off that fade screen and Proctor went over the top. Baycott finds him. And Davis knocks down his first three of the game. Even though this has not been R.J. Davis's best scoring game, his defense hasn't changed and his expression hasn't changed. He just keeps working. Keeps getting better every year. Filipowski with a much-needed three for Duke. A 6'10 with a step back, and Carolina coming back in transition. Well, even after a made field goal, they get it up the floor so quickly. But Baycott with a terrific pass to R.J. Davis and just a slow rotation to get to him. And Filipowski with a step back dribble to the three-point line on Armando Baycott. And nearing the eight-minute mark, John Shire has brought Filipowski to the bench probably briefly. Ryan Young has checked back in. Yeah, just get him a little more rest before yeah. the next media timeout. Cadeau turns on the Jets but lost it. He was trying to draw contact, but McCain held his ground. Roach frees himself and knocks down the mid-range jumper to make it an eight-point game. That's his spot. And usually Jeremy Roach likes doing that from the left side of the floor with a right-hand dribble. McCain going under that screen. He's not worried about Cadeau pulling the trigger on a three. Now, Ingram, you better guard. Cadeau, bounce pass out to Ingram. Ten to shoot. Now Davis. Leans in, missed it, tipped, and Carolina gets it back. Ryan, the shot clock did not reset. That's why he hoisted it. Here comes Proctor. McCain misses a three, and Davis has a much-needed rebound for the Tar Heels. The bodies are flying, and the reason? It's Duke and Carolina. Baycott having a big night. 
And will be going to the line. One on one in the post. He decided to take Ryan Young right into the lane to draw that foul. Hensbro is here. And boy, they are seeing just a terrific effort from the current version of the North Carolina Tar Heels. Don't forget, there is another top 10 matchup coming right after this game from Rupp Arena. Dalton Connect, who's averaging 32 a game over his last six. 32. He will lead the balls into Lexington. At Duke right now down 10, and they are out shooting North Carolina 52% to 49%, and out rebounding the Tar Heels. But the difference has been turnovers. And Harrison Ingram. Filipowski open for a three. Not close. He is now one for six from three-point range tonight. He's six for eight from two-point range. 16 on the game. Carolina was icing that side action. And Duke just went down to the baseline and threw back to Filipowski. But he missed everything. Now Jeremy Roach guarding R.J. Davis. They caught the handoff to Ryan. Four on the shot clock. Off the glass, no. And a great effort by Ingram. To the deck to save it and kick it back out. What an amazing play by Harrison Ingram. That was an amazing play by Ingram. And it winds up with a Cormac Ryan three. Roach with a layup at the other end, but it is still Carolina by 11. Boy, when that ball has been loose or long, North Carolina has snatched it. That's a big time winning play by Harrison Ingram, who has played a ton of minutes in this game. 33 to be exact. He's played more minutes than anybody on either side. Davis bumped by Roach. They call these 50-50 balls. Harrison Ingram keeping it alive. First to the deck. Day at Georgia Tech. But they have played at such a high level at both ends of the floor here in this one tonight. That was just the 16 foul for Duke, so no free throws on that foul committed on R.J. Davis before the post-whistle contact. Little backdoor cut to Davis. Filipowski got a piece of it. Duke has it. It's a tight window. McCain, big three, the assist to Proctor, and Duke's got it down to eight. Boy, that was a huge bucket. And we talked about Jared McCain in transition. He's an excellent three-point shooter. Sets his feet so quickly. He's having a terrific night as well. 18 points, 10 rebounds. Baycott. And one. Well, he took a shot across the face as well, but Armando Baycott just spun baseline off of the contact. Filipowski was trying to keep him out of the middle of the lane. He's just backing him into the middle, and then he just spins off that contact with a great drop step. And how about the left-handed finish through that contact? Never took his eyes off the rim, and he can complete the three-point play. Filipowski picking up his fourth. That takes away a little aggressiveness from the Duke big guy in the last 449 of regulation. What an answer by Carolina after that three by McCain. And what a night for Armando Baycott. 23 points and nine rebounds. We had three straight uncharacteristic games where he was under double figures in three straight. Yeah, more points tonight than those three combined. Boy, Ingram is everywhere defensively. Mitchell launches a three, and it's Carolina ball. Boy, Carolina's been rebounding with all five guys. Nobody leaking out the other way. Give and go. Trimble from Baycott. Well, you turn your head. That old give and go, as you put it, still works, doesn't it? McCain from the elbow. Mitchell battling for the rebound. Out of bounds to the heels. What a great job by North Carolina to close out on McCain and take away the three-point shot. Get him inside that line. Make him take a tough two. Now watch Mitchell. Turns his head. 
and Trimble is gone. What a great cut by Seth Trimble, who has had a fabulous game. His defense has been terrific, and he's been so aggressive cutting. Ryan gets it over, has it knocked away. It stays with Carolina. Want to keep it off the sideline. When you get it on the sideline, Duke can bring that trap. The sideline acts essentially as a third defender. Four minutes to go and a double-digit lead for the Tar Heels. Back screen by R.J. Davis to get Baycott into the low post. R.J. Davis finds an open Elliott Cadeau. And rebound Mitchell. Roach around Ryan. Too strong. Filipowski no, and Baycott wraps it up for his 10th rebound of the game. Carolina has made Duke finish at the rim. Taking him off the three-point line. They forced him to be two-point players and individual playmakers in the second half. Baycott swings it. And Ingram was standing out of bounds when he caught the pass. So it'll be Duke ball with 3-11 to go, but Carolina still with a double-digit lead. Lost both games to the Blue Devils last year. We get another great matchup coming your way with Tom Hart and Jimmy Dykes right after us. Also, more ACC action Wednesday night on the ACC Network. It'll be Louisville, Syracuse at 7 Eastern, and then Notre Dame is at Cameron Indoor at 9 Eastern. Filipowski muscles his way in and draws the foul. 18 points now for Filipowski. And Duke is setting those ball screens in the slot. And once that screen is set, Armando Baycott has to stay to stop the ball, then recover. And Filipowski just is able to pivot his way around and go into his body to pick up the foul. But more importantly for Filipowski, he made the bucket. And completes the three-point play to make it a ten-point game. Now Duke is going to have to bring full-court pressure. And Carolina playing with two point guards with R.J. Davis and Elliot Cadeau. And Cormac Ryan, a good ball handler as well. Textbook job there by the Heels to get it over. And now they can afford to burn some clock. They don't want to take their foot off the gas, but at the same time, there's no reason to be in a hurry. Cadeau with Filipowski on it. Baycott with McCain on him. Filipowski over to help. Davis gets free. And R.J. Davis knocks down a huge three to make it a 13-point lead. When the ball went inside, excellent split action between Cadeau and Davis to free him up for that three. You can't let that come out on the ball side. Boy, Baycott forced Filipowski into another tough shot. And another guard coming down to help rebound. They're not just letting Ingram and Baycott do all the rebounding. It's been a team effort on the glass for North Carolina. And whose hands would you rather have the ball in late in the game than R.J. Davis, Carolina's number one free throw shooter in Tar Heel history. 92% from the line this season. Cadeau misses the three, Mitchell the rebound, but it's down to a minute 45 to go. Carolina has to continue to guard the three-point line. They need quick buckets, and a foul is called on Cadeau, which will send McCain to the line for three. Part of the rule is you have to let the player land. And Cadeau went into him, didn't foul as the shot was being released. It was after it was released, just stuck his body into him. So the McCain couldn't come down. And Hubert Davis is consoling Cadeau over there. He keeps saying over and over, it's okay, it's okay. Well, no matter the mistake, and that was a mistake, you have to move on to the next play. Focus your mind on the next play. What happened on the last play isn't going to help you make the next play at all, positive or negative. How tough has McCain been in this game? Yeah, I was just thinking that. Overshadowed a little bit by some of the performances by the Tar Heels, but he's been magnificent as well. How about 20 and 10?
Made them all. But it's still a 10 point deficit in just a minute 40 to go. Yeah, Carolina just has to be strong with the ball when they catch it. Have to expect contact and Duke gives up the foul. Elliot Cadeau to the line for one and one, just 63% of the season, but five for six from the line tonight. Well, these are the kind of pressure free throws you need at the end of a game to salt a game away when you have a lead. Doesn't get it. Duke needs scores and in a hurry. Mitchell spinning on Ingram. It'll go somehow to make it an eight-point game, and a timeout is called. Tough take by Mark Mitchell. Laying off him, he just took up that space and got right into the body of Ingram. Juan Jameson, that is Carolina royalty right there. Jameson is here. Speaking of Carolina royalty, Bull Roy. The Hall of Fame coach. And another foul, so Duke's going to make Carolina earn it at the free throw line, but R.J. Davis is the last guy you want to send to the line. And you know that in the timeout that John Shire called to stop the clock, that Hubert Davis was telling his team, let's get the ball in the hands of R.J. Davis. Duke fouls Davis, and you've got a 90% free throw shooter headed to the line. And a, a player that's having a spectacular year that has ice water in his veins. Really a guy over his four years first year eight points per game like a, a good solid role player then became a starter Then became a star and now is playing about as well as anybody in the nation I think Zach Eady still has a fairly comfortable lead for national player of the year But RJ if you're gonna bring anybody else into the conversation you better bring this guy in pretty quickly Yeah, RJ Davis is one of the next names that's gonna come up. I mean Zach Eady's got it on his shelf right now You have to take it from him Roach with a layup. And North Carolina right now is thinking no threes, no fouls, and then inbound the ball cleanly and be strong with it. Ryan double teamed. Did he get tied up? Yes, he did. And the possession arrow favors Duke. Now that's where you have to be smart and call a timeout. If you get in trouble, you always have a timeout. Guarding the three-point line now is everything. If you give up a two, you don't want to give up anything. But if you give up a two, that's one thing. You do not want to give up a three. McCain all the way to the rim, knocked away from behind, and Davis has it for the heels. What a play by Cormac Ryan. Hey, that's the kind of game-winning play that you need late. Cormac Ryan blocking that from behind with his right hand and saving a bucket and sending Carolina to the free throw line. That's a big time block by the transfer from Notre Dame who started his career at Stanford playing for Jared Haas. Sixth year senior, 25 years old, one of the oldest players in college basketball, and he has enjoyed the opportunity that he has got transferring here, playing in games of this caliber. 25 years old, you think they call him Pops? <laughs> A rare, rare miss for R.J. Davis. But unfazed. He never changes expression. What a player. Final minute, nine-point lead. Roach shakes Baycott, misses the three. And a foul underneath, and R.J. Davis is shaken up. Looks like he took a shot to the face. And I think they called the foul on Davis. They did. Grabbing on to Filipowski, trying to block Rose. And then North Carolina is going to have to guard that three-point line again. Because Duke needs points in a hurry.
One of two, 88-80, Duke ball with 43 seconds to go. What Carolina wants to do is make this ball go to the short side of the floor, to the right side, the ball side. And a turnover. And Tremble doesn't have to force anything, and he gets it to the right guy in Davis. And that may signal the end of the opportunities for Duke. R.J. Davis, after taking that shot and getting the hook and hold called on him, Cormac Ryan doing a nice job of reading that play. Filipowski, instead of catching it, tried to dribble it with one hand, his left hand. And that puts Carolina at the line. So instead of Duke getting a four-point or five-point play, they miss a free throw and turn it over. And R.J. Davis able to salt this one away. And even after a four-point first half, R.J. Davis now has 17 points. And he'll get a huge ovation. He sits, withers back in. The seconds ticking away. McCain lays it in for two more. 23. Three different Blue Devils have 20 or more in this game, and they're still down by eight. And a timeout taken by Hugh Heels. What, five turnovers in, in the ball game for, for UNC? That, that's ridiculously efficient. Trimble to inbound. Two on Davis, trying to keep it away from him. Carolina gets it in to Ryan, and he'll run a few more seconds off the clock. Mac Ryan, a 90% free throw shooter himself. And that's a that's a luxury at the end of games to have guards that can knock free throws down at that rate. A win for Carolina, and they'd create a little more distance between themselves and everybody else in the league. Virginia won today at Clemson by one, 66-65. Don't look now. Here come the Hoos, eight and three. A tough loss for Clemson. The league in the middle is kind of muddled and jumbled, and right now only three projected tournament teams out of the ACC. Maybe a couple of teams step forward, assert themselves, beat up on others the rest of the way. But right now, these two teams, one and two in the league, as Filipowski lays it in. Davis. They're trying to make him give it up. Trimble kicks it way ahead to Baycott. And that is the exclamation point on a Tar Heel win over the Blue Devils here tonight.